In this video, I'm going to show you how to program the PAL-1. The PAL-1 is a modern-day replica of this, of the KIM-1, which was produced by Moss Technologies in the 1970s as a trainer for their 6502 processor. The 6502 processor was used in the Atari. It was used in Commodore 64, Commodore PET, and Apple II and other computers. Um, the, the PAL-1 has the 6502 chip. It has 5K of RAM, which is more than the Kim 1 had. And then it has the exact same ROMs that the Kim has on an EEPROM. And then 6532, a little bit more modern version of the Riot chip, because uh, the old Riots aren't available, but it works the same way. Um, it's got four LEDs for showing addresses and two LEDs for showing the contents of memory at that address. And it's we get to type in programs using the keyboard, or we could hook up a serial card, serial port, and do it over serial. So that's a brief introduction to the, the PAL-1. The, before we actually plug it in and start programming, we're gonna make sure that JP1 is open, um, and you can read it right there. It says open is the keypad, closed would be RS-232, and then JP2, which is uh, gonna tell it to use this RAM and not some external RAM. And then the last, setting we're going to have here is the SST, the single step mode. We're going to turn that off and then we'll plug it in in a minute. But before we do that, I'll talk about what, how we're going to program it. So programming the PAL-1 just entails putting some bytes in memory, machine code and data into the RAM and then telling the um, PAL-1 where you want to go and hit go. Um, there are a few preliminaries um, that trip people up sometimes. Um, First off, we have to establish the um, IRQ, the interrupt vectors for IRQ and non-maskable interrupt so that we can do things like press the stop key, uh, single step through the code, or do software breaks, which our first program is just going to do a simple set of operations. It's going to uh, load a value into the accumulator, which is a register on the 6502, and then it's going to break. Well, in order for that to work, we have to we have to load the RQs. So we're gonna before we do anything else, we're gonna load the RQs. We're gonna choose a rational value for what to put there, and the most rational value, in my experience, is to put the location of the start of the ROM, um, which basically helps it behave like as though it's running the ROM. Uh, sorry, it actually is running the ROM. The start function. And the start function just initializes the PAL and then displays whatever's in memory. So what will happen is when we run our program, it'll break and it'll display memory, which is exactly what we're going to want. So a couple of addresses that are useful for that are the location of the monitor start routine, which is in uh, page, I'm sorry, it's in location 1C00 hex. Um, a quirk of the or a feature of the 6502 is that addresses are stored uh, the low byte first and then the high byte. So the uh, 1C00 is going to be stored as 001C, 00 being the location on the page, and 1C being the page in memory. So um, the location where the uh, interrupt vectors are stored is our 17 FE and 17FF for break, and 17FA and 17FB for the non-maskable interrupt, which is also used by the single step. The location of the accumulator, which we'll check, um, is 00F3, so on page 0, location F3. So without further ado, let's talk about the program. So the program is two lines. Um, in assembly notation, we might write it like this, LDA pound dollar 33, which tells us to load the accumulator with the immediate value that we supply. And the value we're supplying here is 33, and then the next instruction is break. Machine code for the program is, it's, uh, we're going to store it in location 200 because that's a good location in the user RAM uh, to run programs from, in my experience. And so we, if we look at that memory after it's been, it's been plugged in, which we'll do in a minute, uh, we would see that it location 200 hex, that there's the value A9, which is machine code for load accumulator with an immediate value to follow. So then in byte 201, we put the value. So 33 hex gets stored there, 
and then 202 gets the break instruction, which the machine code is 00, zero for that. We're ready to program. So I'm going to power up the uh, PAL1. And sorry for the <laughs> for the glare. I mean, can't really figure out how to fix that. Maybe if I had a little sunscreen. But what we're going to do, what we see here is that when I powered it up, it showed the LEDs. Now, if they're not there, just press reset and they should show up if your board is working correctly. And it ran, it shows a random location memory, but in my experience, it's mostly been 840 or 40. And then whatever content happens to be there, usually like 11. Uh, amazing. Or 10. Uh, but anyhow, it's showing us the location, the value, the data at location 840. We're going to do our programming now, but we're, the first thing we're going to do is load up the uh, interrupt vectors. So I'm going to look at the memory location 17FA because it comes before the others and we'll just kind of work our way up. So in order to look at addresses, it's already in address mode, but we're going to make sure we press the address button, the AD button, and now it's going to, whenever I type anything, it's going to change these four characters. So I'm going to go 17F a, all right, one seven FA, which is zero, which in our program is what we what we want. So we're gonna we're gonna hit the plus sign to increment to the next one, which is one seven FB, and we know we want to put one C there, so we put one and C, and you'll notice that I didn't change to data mode, so it changed the address. We haven't heard anything. We just have to retype it one seven sorry, one seven wow FA, all right. 417F A. Whew, got lucky. All right. Plus sign, which is the B. And then we're going to change the data mode by hitting DA. All right. So now when I type, these two digits will change and life is good. So what we want to change it to is 1C. So 1C. And that sets up the uh, non maskable interrupt vector. I'm going to skip the uh, reset vector because that's automatically set up and then we're just going to jump to um, the IRQ or break which is at 17FE and one, which is 00, zero and then 17FF which needs to be 1C. So I'm still in data mode um, but if I'm not sure I can hit data and then I can go 1C and now we've set up both vectors. So now when we press when we hit a software break or we press stop it'll actually do what it's supposed to do. So that's good news. Let's type in the program. So we want the program to start at 200, so I'm gonna go back to address mode. I'm gonna type in 0200, and it shows me there's some random characters, BF are in there, um, and I want A9, so I'm gonna change the data, and data mode, and I'm gonna type in A9. A, and then there's a nine somewhere, there we go. All right, so we have A9 in the in location 200. Let's go to the next location, which is 201, and let's put 33 there. Let's go to the next location, which is 202, and we'll put our 00. Now we've entered the program, but we just want to make double sure. So we're going to go back to address mode, type in 200, shows A9, and then I'll use plus sign to toggle through the memory. A9, 3300. Yay, looks good. So the last thing to do before we run our program is check the contents of the accumulator to see what, what's in there already. So we're going to go back to address mode, 00F3. And we see that there's a 01. We could set that to anything we want, but 01 is not 33, so we'll be able to see the effect of our program. So now we set the address back to 200, and we're ready to run the program. We can do that by pressing the Go key. The reason it stops at 204 is because the break instruction that appears at 202 is actually treated as a two-byte instruction. So it consumes, if you will, 203, and the next instruction is going to always be two bytes higher than your break instruction. So it's going to stop at 204. And so the program has run, and as theory would go, the accumulator should now have 33 in it. So let's take a look. We're going to go address and 00F3 and sure enough it has 33. Just to be sure, let's change the data there. Let's put in uh, FF for grins and then we're going to go back to address mode 0200 and we're going to press go again. Stops at 204. What's over there? Let's go to address mode 00 
F3, and 33 is back in the register. So it seems to be working. Let's go ahead and try out single mode, single step mode while we're here. So I'm going to switch over to single step mode. I'm going to put the address back in to 200. Well, first I'm going to change the contents of this memory. So data, I'm going to change this to something else. Let's go with 99. And then go back to 200. Let's press go. It goes single step. And even before this software break takes place, um, we can look at the contents of the register and see if they've changed. So 00F3, and they've already changed. And there's no need to re reestablish the program counter, although we can. So I'm going to go to program counter, which is at 202, restores that to the register, and then I can go again. And we can see that nothing really changed over in the register. All right, so that is it for this first video. Um, the big challenges here were explaining things that are somewhat complicated, considering that this is my first go around with this stuff, and then getting the video to, to work um, where it would show this and me and the program all at once was a little challenging. But hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Bye.